This Device 76 is a small plane-like disguised bomb. Launched from a special cannon propelled by a pulse jet engine steered by an automatic control system flying far distances to its great target and crashing with devastating effect via nosedive. Maximum fuselage length of 8.3 meters, wingspan of 5.4 meters. The plane consists of the following parts. Fuselage, wing, empennage, engine, and in the front, the odometer. The wings are easily removable, attached to the spar bar. The individual fuselage parts, the pulse jet engine, spar bar and wings, are replaceable and are easy to replace. Simple connecting elements result in assembly times of only a few minutes. The fuselage consists of nose tip, nose, load space, middle part, and tailpiece. In the fuselage, various single devices are housed that are needed for completing the mission of a self-flying bomb. In the nose sits the lawn gear and the electric impact fuse. Behind them, the compass and a wooden sphere. The electric fuse sits in front of the explosives housing. The middle piece of the fuselage functions as a fuel tank with a holding capacity of 680 liters. Behind that, the spherical bottle with compressed air of 160 atmospheres. Lately, there are two spherical bottles. In front and under the pulse jet engine is the engine regulator. Located in the tailpiece is the control unit, rudder machines, transmitter battery, transmitter and antenna. The site of impact is determined by the transmitter system. The device in original recording. The aircraft body is made out of sheet steel using the most modern manufacturing processes of the time. Only in the front, at the nose of the fuselage, aluminium white metal was used due to compass manipulation. Fuselage nose with log, odometer. The air log is used to measure the distance covered. The load space over which the cable duct leads is a welded sheet metal container filled with high quality explosives. In four places, the load space is connected to the middle section of the fuselage via Fredberg screw couplings. Here is the coupling. When launched, the 2.2-ton device is accelerated on this fitting with a force of 40 tons. The rear part of the fuselage with streamlined mounting of the pulse jet engine. At the rear, the pulse jet engine is mounted on a pendulum support with a rubber gasket. The antenna is only installed in machines equipped with the tracking transmitter. After the spear is inserted and attached to the fuselage, the wings are pushed on. The wings and spar are interchangeable and can be attached into any machine. Thanks to the special measuring methods, the wings have been brought to the correct adjustment angles. When mounted at the launch site, there are only two to be inspected for transport damages. The wings are now prevented from slipping out sideways by turning in a screw. Thanks to the simple construction, assembly is carried out within a few minutes. The elegantly sleek device reaches a speed of well over 600 km per hour. The pulse jet engine by Argus is used as the engine. How the engine works The compressed air flows from the spherical bottle into the fuel tank and presses on the liquid level. This causes fuel to flow through the regulator to the engine. The outside air flows through the flap valves into the combustion chamber in which fuel is injected at the same time. Only for the first ignition a spark plug is needed. The ignition for all subsequent working periods is on hot residual gas particles. The ignition creates a compression wave that runs to the open end of the pipe and this turns into a dilution wave. It runs back and causes the flap valves to open. The steadily inflowing fuel forms with the inflowing outside air a fresh mixture. 
This dilution wave, which is reflected on the closed valve box and runs to the open end of the pipe, was also created during the ignition. Here, it transforms into a compression wave that runs back to the valve box and closes the flaps again. Repeated, the dilution wave opens the flaps. The overpressure or compression wave closes them again. The acceleration of gas particles that are ejected at the open end of the pipe is connected to the wave process. The outflow at great speeds creates thrust in the direction of the arrow. The physics of the moving gas waves is the invisible secret of the pipe. What is difficult to understand in theory is shown to us by the slow motion camera at the test stand, the pulsating work of the pulse jet. The following details are of the engine on device 76. The pipe in flight condition. Hood removed. The hood is used to cover the aerodynamically unfavorable pipe head. The tube is suspended from the fork with rubber bearings. In front of the valve box, which contains the air valves, the lines for fuel and starting air. Flap box removed. The cover protects the flap box from the flame and improves the mixture preparation. The thrust tube itself is just a sheet of metal tube, an engine of the utmost simplicity. Here is the flap box from the front, with many small air inlets. The cover is on the back. Now that the cover is removed, you can see the injection nozzles, which spray fuel. The springly flap valves made of thin sheet metal. In the rhythm of the explosions, the flap valves close and open the pipe. To let air in again and again for new combustion. The device is ready to go on the launcher. An engine test run is shown. The ignition is switched on. The pressure of the compressed starting air is correct. The space behind the pipe has been cleared. One push of the button. Partial load. Full load. The flap valves are working. The mysterious process of the successive explosions takes place in the pipe. Slow motion recordings. The flap valves close and open in rhythm with the explosions while the nozzles inject fuel into the combustion chamber. With this engine, the device can cover long distances. Overview of the control systems in the fuselage. Compass, compressed air tank, control unit, rudder machine, elevator machine. The compass sits behind the aluminium fuselage nose. It is built into a hollow sphere made of wood, which protects it from the disturbances caused by sound vibrations of the engine. The compass, whose magnetic system is equipped with pneumatic taps, keeps the missile on course. The compass pulses amplified and attenuated in the control unit. The control unit, a pneumatic gyro control, monitors the horizontal and vertical altitude of the body. It combats gust disturbances faster and more sensitively than the best pilot. Tough development work was necessary until the control unit worked flawlessly, despite the launch blast and the engine vibration. The attitude gyro measures the inclination angle of the flying bomb around the vertical and transversal axis. Contact drive for angle shot. Height box with amplifier piston for height control. The left side. Dampening gyro for transverse axis, the right side, dampening gyro for vertical axis. These gyros dampen the spurious rotations of the flying bomb. Here, the pendulum support of the attitude gyro by which an error of migration around the transverse axis is prevented. At the same time, currents controlled by the compass flow in these support pulses, which prevent emigration from the target course. These coils are also used for angle shots. The attitude gyro is a mot. Running at around 30,000 RPM, in its cardinic suspension, it forms a solid base and allows in this way the measurement of the angle of deviation of the missile from its normal position.
locked like before the launch. After takeoff, the device flies at a fixed climb angle. Upon reaching the normal flight altitude set on the ground, the height regulator shown here has the task to swivel the gyro frame so far that the device gets deflected from the climb into a horizontal flight leading up to the target. The measured values on the position and attenuation gyroscopes are taken with the help of so-called jet pipes. The exiting airflow causes different pressures in the two holes, depending on the body position. The ratio of these pressure differences is equal to the rudder deflections. These commands are transmitted from the control unit to the rudder machines through hoses and pipes. Here, the fine steering impulses are converted into powerful rudder movements. The compressed air pressure of six atmospheres gives 60 kilograms of adjustment force. The cooperation of the control organs ends in the rudder deflections. And unaffected by any interference, the missile is maintaining its prescribed flight path from start to finish. Special devices are also built into the device to carry out its tasks. Airlog, belly contract, electric detonator, mechanical impact detonator, mechanical long-term detonator, counting unit, descent flaps, and the antenna. While the compass pays attention to keeping the course, the odometer tells when the desired distance has been covered. The log wing prompts cruise its way through the air. The revolutions are transmitted electrically by the contactor to the counter, where the distance covered is registered. After 60 kilometers of flight, the counter activates the first contact, arming the electric detonator. This detonator can be triggered by a membrane or tube in contact of the tip of the bow, by a belly landing contact, or by crash slash heavy impact. The electrical lines between the odometer, detonator, and compass are all in the top run-through of the cable duct to the control unit and the counter in the rear. If the device lands flat due to any malfunction, the belly land contact triggers the explosive charge. The drives of these two mechanical detonators are released by the ripcord. The one on the left is a mechanical impact detonator. The one on the right is a long-term detonator. This is the counter in action. The 140-meter long antenna is coiled in this tube. Shortly before the destination, the antenna is released electrically by the counter. The disc pulls out the rope-slash-cable in one second. The transmitter can radio back the position. Only some of the devices are equipped with the transmitter to check accuracy. The counter works incessantly towards the number zero in order to switch the descent contact. The underside of the fuselage is smooth in high-speed flight. The descent flaps are folded under the fins until the counter has reached zero and the descent is triggered. Then, the flaps stand in the airflow. The device plunges down into the target into a steep dive. It can reach speeds of up to 850 km an hour up to the impact. Passage from home to front. The industry delivers separately to home ammunition plants. Fuselage in the delivery condition, load space, surface wings, spar, and accessories. In the Haimat Muna, the parts are subjected to a detailed examination, assembled on a trial basis, and then brought back to the state of supply. In this form of transport, all parts are attached to the fuselage and propulsion pipe in such a way that the device is only a meter wide. On top of the tube, the horizontal stabilizer in a protective box. The sensitive bow tip with protective hood is housed under the tube, between the surfaces attached to the side. By rail transport, the devices begin their way to the front. A wagon can be loaded with three devices. First, they come to the food monog, queued munitions slash larger field ammunition storage, where storage in large numbers is possible. The food monog serves as an interim storage facility. No work is carried out on the device here. The transport continues by rail to the supply point. Here, the devices are checked for damage, get filled up with fuel, and then get transported via trucks to the collection points. There, 
the devices are first brought into the pre-assembled state. In this condition, all work and tests are carried out except for surface mounting and setting of the shot slash trajectory values. The device can be stored until ready for takeoff command comes. The last job is to bring the device into flight mode. The device is ready to be launched. Fuel and compressed air are filled in. The onboard battery is inserted. All devices are checked. The flight order has also been issued because on the control system, the course and altitude and on the counter the distance have been set. Starting with the industry that supplies the individual components, the path of the device was followed up to the front. Now, the device is in flight status and is on its way to the launch site. The device is shot in the air with this gun and then flies on by its own power. The gun or starting ramp length, 48 meters. Departure speed of the device, 370 km per hour. At the end of the pipe, the so-called steam deflector, which deflects the ejecting steam laterally and downwards. The device glides on these surfaces, which are located just above the slotted tube, when it is fired. The control unit with electrical and pneumatic supply lines. The plunger slash piston nodes protrudes through its slot in the gun barrel which attaches or latches on to the underside of the device. The suspension device for the sealing tube with the loops is pushed in. This is the piston that latches onto the device via the piston nose and flings it out. The piston comes out of the muzzle like a bullet and flies in a high arc into the terrain. He will be brought back and reinstated. The opening launcher under the piston nose to which the sealing tube slides. The robust steel piston weighs 150 kilos. It is pushed into the pipe without a piston ring or special seals. Loops and pistons are inside. Now, the sealing tube is pushed in. The sealing pipe is 48 meters long, length of the ramp and has a diameter of 25 millimeters. Its hook-shaped end is attached to the beginning of the gun barrel. A device is used to bring the sealing tube located at the bottom of the gun barrel to the slot. The loops, which are distributed at intervals of 1.5 meters, hold the sealing pipe in its position. The gun barrel is clear. The device can be put on. With this gun feeder cart, the 2.2-ton device is easily placed on top of the gun. The feeder card is coupled to the gun. After releasing the connection to the undercarriage, the upper carriage with the device is rolled over onto the gun. The gun barrel has an incline of 6 degrees. The device is placed on the gun by means of ingenious or clever spindle drives. Under the fuselage you can now see the flight fitting on the aircraft descends over the piston nose. The connection between the piston and the aircraft is established. The upper carriage and the feeder carriage are rolled back. Next. The steam generator must be connected. The mobile steam generator unit develops the energies that eject the device with a force of over 40 tons. Propellant and decomposer catalysts are blown in through the showers in the decomposition room or reaction chamber. Compressed air gets filled in. The steam generator is charged by separately filling in propellant and decomposer components, called T and Z stuff. When T and Z components come together, there is a violent buildup of steam. Therefore, be careful when working with these substances. Make sure there are no dirt particles on the T component, otherwise there's a risk of fire. Dirt, gasoline, and T component pose a risk of explosion. Rinse away any overflowing T component immediately with water. Wear protective suit and glasses when working with T and Z components. The steam generator, which was made ready independently of the gun, is now coupled to the gun.
The final touches are done. The device 76 is ready for launch. When deployed, the gun ramp is built as camouflaged as possible. The aircraft and gun ramp are camouflaged to adapt to the terrain. Earth hills and concrete walls should protect the high-quality device from air attacks. In front of us is the ready-to-go gun. How does the startup process take place? The piston is pushed in. The skit lies on the side. The plane descends onto the ramp. At the front, the driver fitting rests on the piston nose. At the rear, the stern rests on the skid. Now, the steam generator comes into the operation. Propellant and decomposer are injected. The sealing tube under the slit is pressed upwards by the steam. The steam expands and propels the piston forward with the aircraft on top. But how does the slot in the launch tube get sealed? The sealing tube slides under the piston nose, then, bends upwards and is pressed against the slot behind the piston by steam pressure from below. In a matter of seconds, the aircraft races over the slideway and soars into the air. The piston and skid fall off. With this new launch method, the long-range bomb can be shot in quick succession against the target located far away. It launches in a few minutes. The gun leader sits in the bunker. The start commands come from there. With the command device, the firing process is monitored and triggered by an electric remote control. The launch time is getting closer, the main switch is on, the voltmeter indicates that it works. Now, the three warning lamps must light up. They tell the gun operator, the device is ready to go. Time is starting to run, two more minutes. The compressed air for control and engine is on. The control gyroscopes start up. Faster, ever faster. The last man leaves the launch site. The device is tied up and ready to go. Time is running. 10 seconds to go. Starting pipe engine partial load. Full load. Time is running down. Caution. Launch. Unmanned, self-steering, the Long Range Bomb moves its way and carries out her mission undetected and unaffected. Now, a launch in slow motion. The piston and skid fall off. The device is climbing. You can see how the control unit keeps forcing the device back on course. The luminous dots were used for experimental purposes. The descent, and now impact on water. The schematic representation shows the trajectory, again, from launch to impact. With a departure speed of 370 km an hour, the device leaves the gun and climbs at a trajectory angle of 6 degrees. The redirection or leveling takes place after the target height has been reached, which is adjustable from 300 to 2000 meters. The device goes into level flight and increases or gains speed. The electric detonator is activated at 60 kilometers. After 10 minutes, the device has reached its maximum speed of over 600 kilometers an hour. The tracking transmitter switches on. Barrier balloons are cut through the cut nose built into the wing.
The descent is initiated above the target. The device descends in a dive. An angle shot. If the trajectory of the fixed gun does not coincide with the target, the device is brought onto the new course at an angle. Now, you can see it clearly, or not. The machine curves to the right in the new direction. The process is activated by a mechanical drive and ended after a set time. Then, the further exact course correction is taken over the compass. Now, the schematic representation of the angle shot. The angle firing device enables the changing of direction of 60 degrees to the left or right of the gun's direction. The curve is initiated after a flight distance of about 15 kilometers. Our model airplane took off. Angular shot slash correction starts. It was set at 45 degrees. Now it's on course towards the target. The target is reached. Descent and impact. The device is used to combat area targets. In the middle of the hit grid, the impacts give a picture accuracy which corresponds to the requirements of the mission. And now, some more shots of the launch and the flight of the FZG-76 device. <laughs>